husband has demanded more pot stickers and I need to do it from scratch. So in here I have some garlic paste. I'm about to put in some lemongrass. This is to your taste buds, okay, in the bottom of this bag right here. Look. Ugh. Lemongrass. Okay. And ginger. Okay. Why am I doing this in a Ziploc bag, you may ask? Because I won't use the entire amount. Therefore, <clears throat> if I don't use the entire amount, I could just leave it in the Ziploc bag and my life will be a lot easier. This will be in tiny segments. So, right there is what I've got. Garlic, ginger, lemongrass. Okay. So, you're going to add soy sauce. About a tablespoon, I'm going to say about a tablespoon and a half of soy sauce. Okay. The entire package of lean ground pork. Lean ground pork. Very important. Okay. Let's just open this. Like I said, this was kind of last minute because I am tired and it's going to be a little faster than what I wanted to do but I will make these again and maybe I'll re-upload it when I'm feeling I just got back I literally just got back from the gym I just got done with a hellacious workout and then my husband came in and made me do more so hey go do what you gotta do so I did wash my hands what you do is you take the really lean pork and go ahead and add it to your bag. Show you. This is a pound of lean pork. You could use turkey, chicken, ground. I don't know. I'm sure you could use ground beef. I don't know how flavorful that would be. If I was going to do ground beef, I would do a mixture of maybe ground beef and pork. So that's what I would do if it were me. So as you can tell, I got all that goodness in there. Um, because it is extra lean, I add a generous amount of oil to it because the last time I didn't, Matthew told me that it was way too dry. So I poop in about two tablespoons of oil. You don't have to do that if you have some sort of fat um, to it. But that's grapeseed oil and um, or extra virgin olive oil so it has lots of good antioxidants and anti you know the good stuff so let me see I'm gonna put a nice healthy amount of sriracha probably a good tablespoon okay I'm gonna set this aside for a second I am going to, like I said, this is a little faster than what I would have liked. I'm going to take me two of these beautiful green onions. I'm going to peel the little outside of them off so that we've got some good stuff going on here. And then you take it, you chop the little edges off just like so. I will show you what the little pieces look like. What I personally like to do is chop them in half. These have already been washed. I washed them when I got home the first time with all my ingredients. So I will chop, 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 chop. I think they're very important to the meal. It makes it taste real good. I don't use the entire green onion because then it starts getting a little wonky. Let me show you the consistency of chopped green on y'all. So what you want to do is get your 
Ziploc bag. Go ahead and scoot that all in. Alright. Next thing is the bok choy. Bok choy is Chinese cabbage. I like, again, already washed. I'm going to take about three of these off. Okay. I use probably about half of this because otherwise it's just too hard and it doesn't actively get cooked. So I'm just going to black it a little bit. Once it starts getting to the big, big stalk, I stop. So here's all that, and here is the consistency of the bok choy. And then I will add this beautiful bok choy into my food. Here we go. Just to make sure everything's good in there. Okay. And then, uh -huh. um, I think I'm missing, hold on, yeah, I'm missing, um, sesame oil, which I'm only going to, sesame oil is very, very, very strong, so don't add a whole lot of it into your food, or you're going to be like, it's a lot, some ground garlic powder as you like and some rice vinegar rice vinegar I probably I've been cooking for a long time you guys so that was my chair by the way now then once you have your mixture in here now what you do is you have a fun time you could even get your kids to do this Fun time motion it all up. You want to incorporate everything. It's gonna look gross. You want to make sure that you get every ounce of this incorporated with the green onion, with the garlic, with the sesame oil. And it gets real mushy. Then comes the weird and kind of fun part for me. Okay. Alright. Hold on. Once you think you have it incorporated, it should look somewhat like this. Yeah. Something like that. It's all mushed together. What I do normally, once I make sure, I just look it over. Make sure that it all looks juicy and delicious. Okay, these are pot stickers my way. I'm sure other people have better recipes. I don't. So, what I do, I open the bag, I grab where on my life I am the worst person to drop stuff ever. Let's get another spoon. Run the dishwasher this time. Alright. Different spoon. We will use this spoon instead. You will need wonton wrappers. Okay. I will show you what those look like. Okay. Depending on how many you're going to make, you're going to need these little wonton wrappers. Now, this is the pain in my booty. I need some water. Hold on. Okay. You need a little bit of water. Actually, you need a little bit of water for you to do this with. And then you need some water for the pan. So, now. Alrighty. Let's get this done. This is a little weird. Um, I got some water in a cup here. 
I have my wonton wrappers here. I have my meat mixture here. Okay. My spoon. Take off my rings because this kind of gets messy. It's a little funky. So, take your one thin sheet. Okay. You're going to use your fingers to dip in the water and you want to go all the way across on each side. Okay, you want to wet each side of your, see, all four sides. Then you want to dip in and get a little bit of your mixture. Put it right in the middle, okay, right in the middle. Then what I do is I fold it in half, okay, smush it down till it fits and make like a little tiny pocket. Okay, I'm showing you what I do. This is the way I do it. I'm not a goja master. I'm not a pot sticker master. I have not been doing this since I was 12. I literally have been doing this three days. So, then I take a little bit, because it's too big for my pan, I take a little bit of water and I dip it right here and I fold that corner over. I dip this one, I fold the corner over. I dip the top, I fold the corner over. So it makes like a little pocket, little envelope, put it in my pan. Repeat. Okay, get you a wrapper. Okay, dip your fingers in the water. Make sure you get all of the corners, you know, straight. I mean, make a little square with the water on all of the edges can't really don't worry about using too much water you can't really use too much water and take your mixture don't overfill it people don't overfill it because then it's just going to pop open in the oven i mean um in the pan and you're going to lose all the juices out of it and then it's going to be even drier than if you hadn't added any oil if you didn't have any oil so again, I made my little triangle, which you could cook them just like this if you had a bigger pan, but I don't. So I'm going to put a little dot of water here, a little dot of water here, a little dot of water on the top, a little envelope, seals all the good stuff in. Not the prettiest damn thing on the planet, but it works. So what I do is I go through all of this until I have the pan full. Then I will show you how to cook it. I'll be back. And I got about 15 of them in the pan. Yeah. So about 15 of them in the pan. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little oil to the bottom. I've turned my medium high level. I can't really see. Look. Just drizzle a little bit in the corners over here. Not a whole lot. Like, don't go cray. Just a little just to kind of ease the pan up. And then once you start hearing the sizzling sound of the pan, that means the heat's working and everything, put about two tablespoons to three tablespoons of water in and put your lid on the top. And I will show you what that looks like. Once you add the oil and the water, it'll start to steam like this. And you want to leave it on there for until the tops become translucent. So kind of pushing the water and stuff back over here until the tops of these become completely translucent. And then I'll let you see what happens when I flip them over. What I mean by translucent, and then what you want to do is you want to wait for that water to evaporate and then you're going to flip them. Okay, I'll show you what that looks like at this point. You brown them on both sides to your satisfaction. My husband likes them very crispy on both sides, so I'm just going to wait to the other side brown. I'll probably flip the ones that don't look too brown back over, and then they will be served. And that is it. They're already done. Pork cakes are really easy, like fast time to cook. Um, I need an apron because I have made a mess of, because it has cornstarch all over it, so... Now I have to wash my shirt. Well, I had to do it because it worked out either, but wah, wah, wah. So, that is it. That is it. My husband loves them. They're really easy to make. They're just kind of taking a little bit. I hope you guys try the recipe. Let me know what you think. Bye.